the Lapu Lapu can win against the Yuzhang. See Echo with early game comp. Can they actually close this one out before RRQ scales? I personally think that they absolutely can, but it really depends on that momentum at the end of the day. What? Vin is chill. Oh, he's holding back the waves <laughs> again the se for, a for the second round of it. Okay, interesting. Usually it's just dedicated to one lane, but now we're seeing Yaoi trying to go up to help any QT out to try and make sure that Skylar doesn't get too far ahead or at least holds that control. Yeah, I mean, you're relying a lot once again here for Skylar to just kind of pop off mid to late game. That's going to be crucial for them. And at the same time, RQ's got to avoid all those picks that Echo's going to be looking for. And if anything, the fact that you have two Petrifies to work against, you've got to really be conscious of that, right? In those lockdown moments, because, I mean, even here, Sanford going to be just fine. But again, going back to the point, especially when objectives are being contested, the angles from Sanford with the Black Dragon form and even looking out for Sanji is always something the teams going against a Kadita have to work for. It's a constant, pretty much mind game from both for both of these teams. You see the focus coming out from RQ Hoshi. Make sure that the laning stage is good for their side. Even when they're not really putting a lot of effort into the gold lane, the fact that they're controlling the minion wave so that it will be in the favor of Skylar, that's already them saying we want to make sure that the laning stage is ours. All right, well, first turtle now up here. You're going to see everybody in position for this as it's crucial for their momentum. Carl is going to start it up. Yep, Black Dragon form already jumping into the back line. Is Carl Teasy in trouble as R7's already down, but he secures it. And Lapu Lapu enjoys first blood. Albert now trying to get on out of the situation. And finally, Yaoi hits level four. Divine Retribute oh. Judgment has already been connected, and they have to back off. It's a two for one trade. A massive win coming out from Echo. Despite them losing a Carl Teasy, they got two kills afterwards. And then the turtle, they gave so much XP as well to Echo. That means that Echo will be in a very comfortable spot. We said the laning stage, the early game should be for Echo, and that's what they are now getting. Oh, Skylar now losing his flicker as well. Purple buff under threat by Yaoi. He doesn't have his all, but Kadita on the opposite side of the map looking to make sure they hold and playing for EXP here. Oh, oh he that, just took it. That's the worst feeling in the world. Truly losing your purple buff this early on. Man. Yeah, tough situation there. I mean, you know, Yaoi. Oh, Watch. Vin. Watch out, already connected on to Benny QT. He's trying to get on out of there. Yaoi unable to punish for the time it being. Albert is there. So now the rest of Echo is going to start backing off. But a majority of Echo's numbers on the bottom side of the map. We're seeing R7 actually committing to this fight. Forcing out, don't, didn't see that petrify, he's still good. Rack number one, internal secure, but I would have, uh, I, I, well, I want to say top lane, you saw Vin commit the wild charge, want to go for Benicuti, they didn't even force the purify onto Benicuti because they missed that wild charge, it wasn't able to knock that up. Oh, the combination was clean, Samford sets it up, Sanji knocks it out of the park, and here comes Albert, can he turn this around, Black Dragon Form and get on out of there to ensure oh, that the man. decimate doesn't pick him off. You know you're happy when you're playing the Yuzong and you can just do that, right? You play it a little bit dangerous, a little risky, and you just go ahead and pop the dragon form and fly off on the map. Works great, but at the same time, you notice Yaoi spending a lot of time here on the top side. The focus is Skylar. Vin's there to help him up, but right now, numbers advantage should be even out. Albert also getting wind of this. Just in the area, just in case. Now Turtle's up here. You're gonna see both teams swing into position, and once again, does Echo secure this next objective? Well, let's find out here. Watchdog comes through, but then Tony wants to walk and finds it. Yaoi flickers forward, finds one, instantly taken off the entry straight away. Skylar can't do much about it. And Albert finds one, can he oh. into two? Yes, he can. Benny QT with the Zavin Force gets on out there, doesn't want to be a part of that. Well, beautiful start for Echo. You saw that they were able to snag Skylar. That was one great um, ultimate coming up from Yaoi, then Sanji with the damage. However, Albert finding the opening. He kind of conceded the turtle control for them to take more kills. That's the reason why they have taken some gold away from Echo. And despite them losing that the turtle fight, it kind of felt like RQ is starting to feel that they can equalize this game. RQ knows that they have a disadvantage when it comes to those areas of uh, objective takes, those neutral objectives, right? Especially because you can't expect to just get Carl TZ out of there. He's playing the Barretts for a reason. So if you can actually just stay alive, no one goes down, convert into kills, especially on, let's say, Skylar Albert, you're going to profit big time. Hold oh, on. Oh, he doesn't land the ult. 
He manages to flicker out just in time there, but Sanji is in position. Do they know that he's even there? Albert, he might be in some trouble. The full combination, no, he doesn't commit to it. Sanji decides to walk oh. away. Wild Charge connects onto Benny QT. Snipe comes through, Benny QT still alive, and Yaoi making sure he has vision. Carl TZ to back him up to ensure no dives are gonna happen, but Sanji is creeping up back into the tri brush here. Do they know? Is he going to find his connection? No, sees Albert. It's just not worth his time. Even we're seeing Benny QT just holding on to that lane and Sanford walking up mid. Warrior of Patricia, it's the battle for territories now for both teams. They just want to make sure that there's no team that will have the advantage up top where the gold laners are. And this is massive focus for both teams. They know what the win conditions are. Whoever gets bet the better farm in the gold lane will have a better shot in the mid game. Well, something doesn't seem right here. Bottom side actually getting fully dogged on, and there that's what we want to see. R7 goes down. They command the map, and now the turtle is in full control over Echo as the reinforcements are on their way. Cartesi is playing it as slow as he can, and soon he'll have Yowie. to pop the Daytona as well. But Yowie finds it once again. Clay flickers on out oh. there, but Sanford should be able to find the kill. It lands onto two. Albert is on his way out. Sanji gets the knock up, and Vin unable to do anything, must walk away. You see, you see what's going on here, right? It's all angles that you have to watch out for if you're RRQ here. It's either Sanford come from the backside, Sanji popping out of nowhere, and it's tough for RRQ to handle right now. Yep. They're trying to constantly catch their breath, but at this time, it's already falling yep. apart. You're almost 4K ahead here for Echo. Yeah. You saw, like, Yaoi in the first turtle fight, he went from the right side. This time, he went from the left side, catching RRQ off guard. But my oh my, Echo, with a wonderful um, smart, uh, smart outplay, or outwit of RQ during the turtle fight. That second turtle, they delayed the take of the uh, turtle so that they will have the advantage in the team fight. Mm -hmm. And topside already crushed as well as mid tier one. Sanford here, knowing that he can disrespect the space, he has a level lead. And I think, you know, Skylar with the rest of RRQ might be in some trouble here as the rest of Echo pulls their attention and resources down to the bottom side of the map. Bin has to walk on out, but Carl TZ and as well as Yaoi start taking the space into the bottom oh. side jungle here. They have to move away. They cannot do anything about this. Oh man, you can already see it. Look at the pressure, right? I mean, knowing that Yaoi's there on that Kaja, Sanji and Sanford were waiting patiently too. They just completely press RQ off that tier one, and they're able to secure themselves some more space on the map here, Wolf. Ah, massive map control from Echo. Even Call TZ just running around 1v5. <laughs> Oh, he gets knocked up here. Full combination onto Carlti so far. He now uses the Daytona's welcome. Decimate lands, but it doesn't matter as Sanji finds his own target into Clay. They trade one for one for now. Jungler for mid lane. Skyler's just amazing. I mean, all throughout the day, right? You saw him perform in their series against Onyx Esports. Now he's performing once again. Despite him dying once, you saw how masterful he is with a sniper as well, dealing out the damage against Carlti. But definitely, we said Carlti. Way too brave. 1v5, not gonna work out for him. Well, as, honestly, as of right now, I feel like Echo, and especially when we're looking at Call TZ, now that he switched his role, he's not looking to hard carry this game. He's oh, yeah. looking to be the foundation for the rest of his team members to actually step up. And Sanford Yawi is looking really good, but Sanji in particular, just the control that he has. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, at this point, Carl TZ, especially when he plays these utility type junglers, he's more of that, you know. It seems like the shot caller and just is that vision for the team for everybody else to shine here. And sometimes we see those moments even for RRQ, but right now, again, with momentum being a big thing in most of these games, Echo having control here, it's gonna be really tough for RRQ to contest this first Lord. You also got a glimpse of the item. Skylar, I think only has VOD unless he picked up a second one, but able to get the top side turret some more space, but Sanford's up there and the fight ensues. It's a 4v4, the top side, hopefully we don't see. Ah, oh, the solo kill already connects onto Skylar. Betty QT now zoning out the rest of them. Nothing that RRQ can really do now that Sanford's coming back to make the numbers in their favor. 4v5 does seem ideal, but it's sin in Instantly, we're seeing the Divine Judgment lock down one. Five members against three. Sanford now getting in front of Albert as Yaoi is disrespecting R7, trying to make something happen here. The Bravest Warrior gets locked up. Into oh! the with them. Albert gets locked down, but he still manages to get on out. Salford is, Sanford is still alive, but now the back line is done for. R7 is the next to fall. A two for one trade, maybe even one oh! more. Benny QT unable to find it. What a play coming up from Carl TC, just snagging one of the members of RQ to save his teammates as well. And he even utilized the Daytona's welcome onto his opponent so that they'll land the double stun. 
Unfortunately, Echo weren't able to kill up Albert, but they did take out the Lord, and now they're controlling the purple buff as well. Echo with the economic advantage. Well, right now, you can see that advantage, how confident it makes Echo. And even just, like you said, Carl TZ walking around one versus five, he doesn't really care at this point. So, I mean, Wolf, what does RQ need to do to get back into this game? It's 5K ahead for Echo. Well, they have to concede the control, to, uh, the map control now for Echo. Just utilize uh, Albert or maybe R7 Blue to kind of push the waves destroyed. and allow for Skylar and Clay to just farm the incoming wave. So it's going to be totally defensive now for RQ Oshi. Echo's power spike is literally right now mid game. They have to respect that. Yep, Sanford coming in. Oh. Yeah, we find the catch once again. Good wow. spatial awareness in the outer turret will fall as Echo now with a five man, five man pushing into the inhibitors against four. RRQ playing hyper defensively. Albert has to clear these waves so far. But we see on the bot side, even Carl Tz doesn't mind, proxies the wave, and that's gonna be every single outer turret. Very systematic coming out of Echo. It's gonna be difficult for RQ to defend this, especially when Yaoi's just finding all of these openings. Yaoi already has gotten a fleeting time. That means that from here on out, you're always afraid of Yaoi. Like every 30 or every minute, I yeah. mean, there's a threat of the Divine Judgment one shot. I mean, just at this point, slowly whittling down the base here of RRQ. Echo knowing that they're in full control at this point. And this is, again, referring back to the series we saw with Blackness International, this is what Echo does, right? When they have this lead, they don't let go. Oh, the wall charge connects, but Yaoi was able to get his animation off in time. And now Sanford coming in with a black dragon form, looking to try and get a punish here. Echo find nothing, but with the 7k lead, RRQ do not want to get in that. My goodness, if it just... The plans of RQ, it's not even working at this point. This is because of the fact that Echo does have the map control, but you, you have to uh, you have to respect that if you're RQ. Why not just farm? Echo, though, they're doing the, the lane freeze so that they force out. They're, like, smoking out the members of RQ, get out of their base by freezing the minion waves. Well, I mean, that's, uh, again, going back to this whole point, like, you have Grok. Yes, it was a key to victory. If it ain't broke, you know, keep picking Grok. But this time... Vin hasn't been able to find the targets he, he wants to, but let's say he does. Where, what, what damage do you have to throw at Echo right now? You know, you I think Clay and Skylar both have a couple items, but it's still hard to get through that front line. And even if you do, you've got every other angle to worry about, right? And Sanji so far, 6-0-3, rocking the Petrify here. Can most likely one combo everybody from RQ, except maybe been in Albert, right? R7 is even in quite a quite a bit of danger with this Lapu Lapu pick. So now, next Lord up here, Echo. Oh, oh Vin. Vin, he fights two with the real one manipulation comes on down. They find one pick like you were talking about, Sanji. No time to react in time. And now our RQ are in position to maybe hit a Lord here. Let's see how they play out. Because Albert might be in some trouble. Yaoi is again threatening him with the Divine Retribution. Harteezy getting zoned out for now, but he's really far ahead of the team. Yaoi, once again, looking at Albert's positioning. Albert making sure that he doesn't get locked down for the time being. R7 looking for something against Sanford here, but the same goes for Albert. He's got to be so careful as the mid wave gets pushed in. We oh. see Skyline get locked down by Yaoi. The counter engagement. Sanford now looking to punish the back line oh. instantly. They find Skylar. No flicker for him. Albert's trying to run Vinny with a wild charge to make it out of there. And once again, the economic advantage from Echo still puts them ahead. I no, definitely agree with you, Gideon. It's just the items that allowed Echo to really just hammer to bat like a battering ram against RQ Oshi, but also the dive potential. Even after they were able to take out Sanji, there's still Yaoi, there's still Sanford. So many heroes that can go to the back lines. And Skyler only does have one dash and one flicker. It wasn't enough to keep himself alive during that skirmish. Echo now wins the economic battle. And that's what I'm saying, right? Even if you expend all those resources from RQ to find one member of Echo, at this point in the game, it's not going to be enough. They have to figure out how to stall the game further, allow Skylar, allow Clay to get the items they need. And then those sets from Vin will result in two more. Winning those team fights, winning those even skirmishes, if they can get two down from Echo, three down maybe is much better. But as this game progresses, it's 9K ahead for Echo, and it's showing here as the Lord marches the mid. This is gonna be a guaranteed inhibitor, but top side is collapsing at the same time. R7 is trying to slow it down, but now the engagement happens, and immediately Sanford with the Black Dragon form with the help of 
from Zamenforce. The back line getting attacked by R7, but it really doesn't matter here as the Shroud Residue keeps out for the live. Immediately, we see Skylar fall once again, and that is going to be that. Wait, hold on. Yawi, they're trapped. Oh, they're not here. They can't even seem to be getting out of here with the barrier already down. Yeah, Benny QT jumps into oh! Zamenforce once again to finally turn this fight around. Pro phasing through everybody, and R7 is just looking helplessly. R7 tries with the Bravest Warrior, but the rest of them are looking to end this game. Call TZ is walking backwards with Sanji as well. Doesn't want to jump in. It's too threatening as the Divine Judgment comes on through. Knock up to next. Rough Wave's not going to be committed. Daytona's welcome. Throws him against the turn stuff, and that is going to be game Benny. number one for Echo. First blood drawn here by Echo. And again, a very strong fashion. We've seen it before in previous series. RRQ struggling to hold on in this game one. 